So you say in the memo, and it's more or less what you just described, yes. that one needs to evaluate the price change yes. against the degree to which the fundamentals have worsened. Right. right. That's impossible right now. It is impossible. So why not evaluate the price change against the degree of uncertainty? Because that's where we were the last time you wrote a memo called Nobody Knows, right? We were on the brink right. of the economic collapse yes. that followed the bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers. Yes. Now, if you went liquid right after Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, and then you waited to buy, you did relatively well. It was a whole lot easier to sell in September than it was to sell in November or December. Why not do the same thing now? Well, I'm not sure I follow that. I don't think it was uh, easier to sell. Everybody wanted to sell. The competition was on the selling side. The easy part was buying. And, and Well, things got worse. Things went further oh, I, down. Okay. okay. Yes. Well, I don't think in terms of days and weeks. Uh, <laughs> so you have me at a disadvantage. But, I mean, directionally, uh, the, the, the question is, uh, you know, ha are things cheap or rich? Now, as you say, it's impossible to say. But on the other hand, uh, you know, I've been coming on your show for a couple of years, saying that I More thought, than a couple, it's saying true. I thought that things were steep. Uh, there was a lot of risk taking going on. Things were priced for perfection. Oak Tree was, was there exercising was, there caution. Was optimism. We were being cautious, and w it was hard to buy things for less than their worth. It was hard to get a bargain. That was the recurring theme. Now, we can't really be uh, too. Uh, doctrinaire about whether things are cheap or rich, but we know they're a heck of a lot cheaper than they were two weeks ago. And uh, we know that there is panic. And by the way, when I say 12%, that's the overall. We know that there are great exceptions. And one of the things is that in times of chaos, investors fail to make fine distinctions. So things go down more than they should and less than they should. We we have an opportunity, we think, to find the things that have gone down more than they should. It's a better climate for getting bargains today than it was two months ago. Some people want to wait for the bottom. Well, Is it better to buy now if you see a bargain than to wait for the bottom? Well, I could ask you, what is the bottom, Eric? And I have no idea. Well, no, that, it's easy. The bottom is the day before it starts going up. But how do you know? Right. The, the, That's the bottom, why I asked. The bottom is only judged in retrospect. Uh, so I think that, uh, and uh, you know, the book that you meant to plug, Mastering the Market Cycle, uh, <laughs> has a lot about the, this idea of waiting for the bottom. Uh, you never know when you're at the bottom, but you might have a feeling that something's cheap. And if it's cheap, you should buy it. If it goes down more, i.e., that wasn't the buy it, bottom, if it goes down more, buy some more. And keep your nerve and, and continue down as long as you're assessment is right. Howard, people want to know, is Oak Tree out there right now catching falling knives? Well, we're certainly buying. Yes, we're certainly buying. I mean, uh, if, you, if you're a distress investor, you're, you, you, you must uh, turn more aggressive when you're given good chances. Uh, I'm not saying this is the bottom, but I, this is certainly a time to do some buying.